Hey, yep. I am at Bob Minion and the Royal Enfield Deal in Derby, but also the Sim Dealer. This is where I purchased Donkey. Uh, so I've had Donkey now a year and a half. What I'm recording today is, my f is going to recreate my first ride. Not in every detail, as you'll soon understand, but I'll go through the route, talk through what happened, how I felt, but also I think it's something that I had to work through as a new rider. Just things that I had to put up with, things that I had to really get to grasp with. And so, like I said, it's all part of the journey. So, like I said, it was almost the best part of a year and a half. And so I was given Donkey out to here in the yard, in the, uh, where it says, the MOT park. I was given the key, start the engine, it's all running, we're all happy. It's all going very well. Suddenly my mind went blank. How do I take a bike off a centre stand? Do I push it forward or backwards? It was totally bizarre. I got the bike and the keys. I was so busy, I was so stressed. I was so tired and getting all these things done. I, uh, it had been quite an ordeal to get this bike, to get it okayed. And like I said, it all come and my mind just went totally blank. So I was just sitting here and I was waiting. And so, do I take it? Is it forward or back? And so I just started to inspect the bike, walk around it, pro proke it, prod it and, and have a look. And I was like, okay, late. I'll just wait for someone else to do it. In the corner of my eye, someone pushed it forward. Oh, that's it. I pushed forward. Pushed it forward, got it on. And stalled. I think I stalled between there and getting it to this point here on the road. It's at the curb. I think it was about maybe three times. And then I actually pushed it. The gates weren't there at the time. So I wheeled it through. Went to this car park here. Uh, it's actually part of... Uh, oh, I've not. Derby Hospital. Like I said, these gates went here and I just wheeled it through. Went here and, I just, and at this time, like I said, it was COVID and everything was empty. So it was uh, um, about similar time, about four or five o'clock-ish. So I went through round and round and round until I got, my you know, got some practice in, got used to the bike. And that's one of the things, I think, even as a new one, you're going to do perhaps do your CBT. Another time, it's so much pressure, so much stress. Make sure my bike's still there. Make sure it's pressure, so much stress. And you know, there's lots, so many things to think about. And if you're having that new experience, when you do get it, don't expect to be perfect at it straight away. Take your time, give yourself some space. I'm lucky I had this um, area here. So I could just take a little time, go around the car park, get my balance, start to get used to it, find the biting point, and start to create that muscle memory. And after about 15, 20 minutes, um, I felt better. I took off the bike. I can remember just sitting there near the lamppost. And I said, okay, let's take a breather, have a bit of water. Oh man, you've forgotten your water as well. It wasn't good. And so I sat there, I took a break, took a rest, looked at the bike, said, okay, it's fine, we're all gonna be all right. And after that, I said, okay, I better leave. I'll be sitting here all evening. There's no times ever going to be enough. So took it forward, took it out. Um, I was quite proud. I took it from there, right down here, to, without storing, and got here, got off. I just said goodbye to the garage and said thank you. Um, walked over to the bike, and I got on. Dear diary, I want to tell you today about my first motorbike. My little sim NHT125 is a 10 horsepower bike that I nicknamed the Donkey. I bought it in May 2020 from Bob Minions in Derby. It was a interesting buying experience. I went in, um, my, nobody wanted to come with me to have a look, so I went in there, I was quite nervous. Saw the bike, sat on it for a little while, said okay, this feels okay. Because on my first time, I, I didn't know what it should feel like. I didn't know what was right, what was wrong, what was there was, was going to be a problem. So I was quite nervous about the whole thing. And I got it out of the yard, had a little ride around before, and got my head ready. Then I realised that I spent so long waiting to get to this point. And I was tired, I was nervous, and but I was also really, really excited. Um, I was really happy, um, I was really pleased with myself that I finally got this, got my finger out. And got this far. I've been saying I was going to do this for years and I hadn't. So that was really, really good. So I got on the bike and I started my journey. 
I was really nervous. I was really excited. It was a very, very strange bag of emotions. It's, it's almost like just before you have an exam, you have these butterflies in your stomach. But at the same time, you're excited that everything that you've been working towards for so long is happening and it's here. So you're nervous for things that are going to happen. But also then excited that it's finally going you know, to get this done. And that's how I felt. And so as I was moving off, I got to the junction. And at the first junction, it was so busy. And the after school rush, so there were cars everywhere. It was about four o'clock, I think, uh, three, four o'clock. And I got myself there and I was so excited. There was just cars everywhere. And you know, everyone rushing along, horns, traffic, you know, people not being really very patient. And I waited and waited. And at the end, I finally got a chance to get myself out. And I was let through by a white van. But as I was pulling out, another van came and overtook this van and almost hit me. And that was my first 10 seconds on the road. I was, if I wasn't nervous before, and if I wasn't worried and almost in shock as it were, I, I was at this point. But I got my head together, said, right, come on, get on this. You're here, you need to get yourself forward. Get out of this situation. And as I was going down, I was starting to breathe a bit, getting myself up to speed, making sure, check your mirrors, everything. There were so many things to remember. It's very, it's very nervous. I suppose it's the same as when you get into your car for the first time. You're looking in your mirrors, you're, you're constantly checking things and making sure everything's right. But on a bike, there was a really big sense of vulnerability. I had to work myself through that um, in this first ride. Especially, I think I picked the worst time possible. Um, but I still kept on going. Um, there were people who were horning me, people who were cutting up. I think in the first 10 minutes by the time I got to the, you know, the London Road roundabout, I'd probably been sworn at by so many people and I'd been shouted at, horned at, and it hadn't helped. It just really added to my stress. It really helped just to make things more and more difficult for me. And I got to a point, so that's it. I've had enough. I'm, I'm turning now, I'm going home. I'm just going to take the quickest way back. Um, that's it I'm done so as I started to my way my my way back I got to the roundabout um, and I was said to myself something snapped in my head and said what am I doing you can't give up so easily you've had some issues fair enough just get yourself going so I turned and it was right at the last second I hadn't really intended to I hadn't really planned to um, but I was in the right lane to turn left so I just turned left so as I'm going down, um, um, I started to relax more. Um, there was less traffic, there was a bit more space. The traffic lights gave me a little chance to a little, have a breather, to reset myself. To, and it's, it was having that little bit of space, it was having that bit of time that really gave me the chance to have a breather. It's the further I got out of the city centre, um, the more bigger the roads became, the more quieter, until I got to a certain roundabout and a car came out of nowhere. I just didn't see them. They were very fast and like I said, I just didn't notice it. And I hit my foot down. That was my first skid. So at again, I almost dropped the bike and I was again panicking. I was worrying. I was stressing and all the, so I, I felt there was two parts that were now starting to build up um, inside, my, inside my head. On one side it was Come on, you, let's go out. Let's go have explore. This is amazing. I mean, you, you know, you're finally doing it. Let, let, let's not, you know, let's not give up so easily. You can do it. While there was another side that said, "What are you doing? This is dangerous. Look, you've had, you've almost had a dozen people hit you. You've just, you know, all these people are shouting at you. You're doing something wrong. Just get off. Get off the bike now. You know, just get yourself home quick." And so there was these two things that were constantly, we almost seesawing rather on one side where I wanted to do things, on the other side where I said, no, just don't, just go. And so that was quite a challenge. As I got out further out of Derby, um, I actually got to myself to a point where I didn't recognize where I was. I'd been focusing so much on where I, uh, on what was around me, on what I should be doing, indicating, uh, getting my gears right, that I just didn't recognize the place. Even though I'd, I knew I'd been along these roads, hundreds of times but I just it just wouldn't register my head it was it was, it was disconcerting it was you, you know where you are you recognize the place but you just can't place it it was very very strange I put so much pressure into myself and so much stress that I just 
I just was making things difficult for myself until I got to a sign that said Sinfin. I said, okay, so now I know where I am. Okay. Um, so I went around the corner and I just found a place and I just stopped for a minute. After stopping, taking off my helmet, having a breather, um, I sat down, just got my breath together, and I asked myself, okay, what are we doing? Um, I was really starting to make impact my decision making, I really wasn't feeling too happy where I was, and I suppose this is something I wasn't really prepared for, it wasn't something I was expecting. I thought I'd just jump on a bike and I'd drive happily around and I'd come back and it, it wasn't that at all. My, my expectations versus my experience were totally different and that's what threw me, that's what really unnerved me, that's what was making um, so many little mistakes. So I had to stop and I'm glad I did. Um, I think sometimes that I get to things and I push through, that's the right thing. But I think in this case to stop was totally the right decision. So I stopped, said okay what are we doing? Right we're going back home. I'm going to go straight back, that's fine. So I started making my way back. As I got around the corner, um, I, there wasn't. It was nice and relaxed. I was getting feeling much better. Is it? I was feeling much more happier. I was feeling much more confident. Uh, I was coming around corners slowly. I was taking my time. I wasn't letting the traffic rush me, and so I felt much better. As I got to the next traffic lights, I was feeling much more better, much more happier, much more confident. And I thought, okay, look, you're doing this. You were worrying. You were stressed. And at the traffic lights, I stalled again. Um, and again, that just threw me again. It reinforced that I did need to go back. Um, again, the car behind me missed, just stopped just inches from the from a rear tire. And again, he wasn't happy. He was horning. He was having a go. He was saying many, saying many, many things. But I said, "It's fine. Ignore everyone. Just get yourself back." And that was my focus. And I think by having that point. I did start to feel a lot more comfortable. I did start to feel a lot more relaxed. I did start to feel a lot more confident and happy in what I was doing. I said, okay, you're doing fine. Here's the cars, um, just come out, um, keep going past them, keep maintain your speed. So all of these things were just there in my head. They were just, I think for someone who's been doing this a long time, um, this is not something that many people are gonna think about. But for me, like I said, it, it, I, I, did, I did not have a good time so far. But as I got to the last roundabout, I was feeling more happier, confident. I said, look, you've done this. You, know, you, you, you can do this. There was no issues with this. It was all in your head. You know, it's just your fears playing up on you and you're doubting yourself. Come on, you can get around this. As I took that turn at that last roundabout, a car came out of nowhere. And again, narrowly missed me just by a few inches. And again, that just threw me again. So I pulled over to the side and I just stopped. I said, okay, this isn't right. Let's just, just get yourself onto the side. I got over to the side, I stopped and I sat down. And it's almost, if, if someone's been in an accident, there's a moment that just asks you how the accident, your entire body is shaking, you're nervous. And it's almost that belief that, oh my God, I was almost like, I was pancaked. <laughs> I was almost in a serious accident. And th but this wasn't the first time. This has almost happened about a dozen times. So I said, that's it, I'm done. I'm taking this bike, I'm not even gonna ride it. I pushed it back to work and I left it there. And I said, right, I'm going back and I'm going to take sell this bike. I made a mistake. This wasn't the right thing for me. I'm big enough to make, you know, admit when I, I've made a mistake, I tried it, that was a good start. But you know what, this is not right for me. So I decided I was gonna go back and I was going to return the bike, I was going to sell it. Um, in the end I didn't touch the bike for six weeks and when I did um, I took it back to the garage um, to sell the bike. 